Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm sorry I'm not as good at looking as the guy that usually does this, but he's going to have to rewatch that because <laughs> I could have totally said the different. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to the Lighthouse. We are a non denominational, Bible believing, truth teaching body of Christ. We wield the mighty, razor sharp sword of the Spirit, which is the spoken word of God. We believe in salvation, in the salvation giving work of the cross, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ, which is the good news of the gospel. We pray, we praise, and we support Israel. We are confessors of the word of God, we are doers of the word of God, and we are cheerful givers who believe in an abundant harvest. We believe in marvels, wonders, and extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of our God. We are calling in the harvest of souls to God in our region. Welcome to the lighthouse. Welcome to the wetlands of New Mexico. What do you guys think about today, huh? Awesome. Widespread rain, I guess, pretty much, everybody. I know I'm a little south of town. Snow. Did you guys get snow out there? Really? How much? Really? It flurried a little bit, but it was mostly rain in my house. But, uh, yeah, that was awesome. Wetlands in New Mexico. Do you guys know why we're the wetlands in New Mexico? That's exactly right. Because we speak it, right? Spoken word of God. We're the wetlands because we tell it to come. One time I had a lady tell me, she said, uh, you can control a lot of things, but you can't control the weather. I said, well, I said, um, it says that we'll do what Jesus did and more, and he rebuked the winds and the waves, so I believe you can talk to the weather too, amen? Uh, so I got my daughter a fridge for her birthday. I can't wait to see her face light up when she opens it. <laughs> what do you call a woman with one leg? Eileen. <laughs> there was a guy walking down the street, and uh, he came up, was starting to pass the local psych ward at the hospital. And he saw this big kind of yard area with a big wooden fence. And as he got closer, he started hearing this chanting, and all this multitude of voices chanting, 13, 13, 13. And out of curiosity, he tried to find a hole in the fence so he could see what the heck this was about. As he found a hole, he stuck his eye up to it to look, and a sharp stick came out and jabbed him right in the eye. And then he heard, 14, 14, 14. <laughs> uh, well, welcome, guys. Um, for those of you that, that don't know me, I'm Case. Uh, usually you see me over there. Used to be back there some, but Maddie's better, so she took over that. Um, where we're going to start is Psalms 103.20 in the Amplified. And uh, this is something that I was reading, oh, not too long ago, and it really just, it just really hit me, um, because it can be fairly misinterpreted, or not necessarily misinterpreted, but but the point of the end of the scripture, um, I think, is really cool. And here in Lighthouse, we like I was talking about earlier. We talk about the power of the spoken word of God. Now, that's what it says in Ephesians 6, right? Um, it's the razor, razor, mighty razor sharp sword of the spoken word of God. And that, that's our weapon. That's the weapon we wield. Anything Jesus did, he spoke it into existence. Any miracle, um, he spoke it. He said, T pick up your mat and walk. And so in Psalm 103, 20 in the Amplified, it says, bless affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. Now, the, the part that I want to point out is that very end, hearkening to the voice of his word. That doesn't say hearkening to the voice of God. That's saying hearkening to the voice of his word. So when his word is spoken out. I think that's so cool. So we talk about the power of, of the spoken word. I like to know how things work. Um, 
I, I, that's just kind of, if I'm interested in something, I like to understand how it kind of works and how it goes together. And, uh, and seeing that when I'm, when I'm confessing the word, or Monty has said, you know, we're, we're uh, confessing, we're, we're believing, we're stuffing the pipe with our faith, and we're going to see a manifestation come out the other side, it, it, it depends on how long. Sometimes it's longer and shorter, but if you continue to stuff that pipe with your faith, it's going to come out the other end. And the part of that scripture that it says that hearken, um, they ar- hearken to the voice of his word, I think that's so cool because angels are dispatched. As soon as we speak the word, angels are dispatched on our behalf, doing whatever we're saying that li- lines up with his word. And I think that's really cool. Um, in Proverbs 18.21, it's where it says that power and life and death is in the tongue. Uh, we speak a lot about speaking life. One thing I, I thought about a lot, too, is speak life over yourself and don't speak death. You know, Speak death over lack. Speak death over sickness. Speak death over those things, but don't speak death over yourself. Don't let those negative. And it, once I started kind of paying attention to the things that are coming out of my mouth, I didn't realize how much death I was speaking over myself. Even sometimes, a lot of times it's sarcastic. A lot of times I wouldn't even mean it to be that way. But um, I think it's really cool. One thing before we uh, pray and have the worship team come up that I kind of a real revelation that hit me is uh, a lot of people, if you don't believe in the power of confession, the one thing I will say is uh, in Romans, and Monty always says the ABCs of salvation, it says, admit and acknowledge, um, believe in your heart, and confess. Well, you have to confess to be saved, right? We have to confess it. We have to say it with our mouth, believe in our heart, he rose from the dead, and we have to confess it. So even in your salvation, a lot of most, if you're a Christian, you believe in salvation. And you, even in your salvation, there's confession. There has to be that. So that just proves the power in it. And I think that's really cool. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We love you. Lord, we praise you. We thank you for the word. Lord, we thank you that um, in this life, you don't leave us hanging, Father. We thank you that um, you give us the mighty razor-sharp sword of the Spirit, which is your word, Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you have shown us in your word how to wield that sword, Father. Um, We're so grateful to you that we're not hopeless, that we are not victims, but we are victors, Lord, in this life through you, Jesus, because of the authority you have given us, Father, that everything that we um, that we believe through you Jesus and in any problem because the same mighty power that raised Jesus from the dead resides inside of us and we thank you Lord that you've given us that power and that ability to reign victorious in this life Lord we love you Lord we thank you we praise you we ask you to Prepare the way for this service, Father, to bless it, Lord. We come here expecting change, Father, and we thank you that we're not just playing lip service, Father, but we are here truly ready to grow and change in your word. We thank you for the word you're bringing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, everyone stand to your feet. Let's worship the Lord together. Praise his holy name. I was reading today in Matthew and Matthew 15, 31, it talks about how some these um, <laughs> people followed Jesus out to the desert. It's a big group of people. And it says that all of them were healed. The blind saw, the deaf heard, and they were all healed. And then it said they spent the next three days praising the God of Israel <laughs> for all that. Three days after all the miracles had been done, they spent three days praising him. So can we faith praise tonight, even if you haven't, necessarily seen a manifestation of a miracle in your life right now can we faith praise for that imagining that that's happened already because in his timeline it has happened amen so let's praise like we just saw a thousand miracles thank you lord jesus (laughs) all right praise you lord Here in your life we find what makes us come alive, a sacrifice of praise. A city on a hill, surrendered to your will, your glory on display. 
your glory on display. Awesome in this place, Jesus, you were awesome in this place. Worthy to be praised, Jesus, you were worthy to be praised. You will be praised. You will be praised. Your love a force of grace, consuming every space. It's uncontainable. You're coming like a flood. Our hearts are filling up. All things are possible. All things are possible. Awesome in this place. Jesus, you are awesome in this place. Worthy to be praised. Jesus, you are worthy to be praised. You will be praised. You will be praised. Your praise goes on and on forevermore. We lift the name of Jesus. Your kingdom come is what we're living for. We lift the name of Jesus. Your praise goes on and on forevermore. We lift the name of Jesus. Your kingdom come is what we're living for. We lift the name of Jesus. Awesome in this place. Jesus, you are awesome in this place. Worthy to be praised. Jesus, you are worthy to be praised. You will be praised. You will be praised. Your praise goes on and on forevermore. We lift the name of Jesus. Your kingdom come is what we're living for. We lift the name of Jesus. Your praise goes on and on forevermore. We lift the name of Jesus. Your kingdom come is what we're living for. We lift the name of Jesus. We lift the name of Jesus. We lift the name of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? What can make me whole again? What can make me white as snow? Nothing but your royal blood. What can heal the heart of stone? What can resurrect these bones? There's no other fountain, no. Oh. Nothing but your royal blood. Nothing but your royal blood. Your blood will never lose its power. Your blood will never lose. Your victory will stand forever. Your blood will never lose. This was one upon the cross. This was written on his scars. 
This has made us conquerors. Nothing but your royal blood. Nothing but your royal blood. Your blood will never lose its power. Your blood will never lose. Your victory will stand forever. Your blood will never lose. Your blood will never lose its power. Your blood will never lose. Your victory will stand forever. Your blood will never lose. Your blood will never lose. Now by this we'll overcome. Now by this we'll reach our home. Now our sin and shame are gone, only by your royal blood. Now by this we'll overcome, now by this we'll reach our home. Now our sin and shame are gone, only by your royal blood. Only by your royal blood, your blood will never lose its power. Your blood will never lose. Your victory will stand forever. Your blood will never lose. Your blood will never lose its power. Your blood will never lose. Your victory will stand forever. Your blood will never lose. Your blood will never lose. Your blood will never lose. Yes, thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Thank you, Jesus. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood atoning then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him. And all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing. How he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see and then i cried dear jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow jesus came and brought to me the victory oh, oh victory and jesus my savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. 
So aren't you thankful for your victory in Jesus tonight? Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I fly away, oh glory, I fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I fly away. I fly away, oh glory, I fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I fly away. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me. With his redeeming blood, he loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the victory that we have in you. We thank you for the new things that you're bringing to us, the new things that you're bringing to this region, the new things that you're bringing to this, converse, this congregation, Lord. We praise you for your blood that gave us the victory, and we thank you for victory in every single area of our lives. In Jesus' name, we thank you for the word that is going to be brought here tonight. We declare that we're ready to receive it, and we're ready to go out and practice it in Jesus name. We praise you in your mighty mighty name, Jesus name. Amen. Good evening. good evening. Wow, that's loud. Is that okay? Is that good? Are we good? All right. Can you hear me? Yeah, definitely pay attention to her. Yeah. Trust me on that one. Trust me. So we had a little back throwback Saturday night with a little gospel. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. That reminds me of walking uphill to school in the snow three miles up <laughs> both ways. You know, but anyway. Barefoot, Barefoot, both yeah, ways, exactly. yeah. Hot rocks in your pockets to keep your hands warm and eat for lunch, yeah, all that, yeah. So, but anyway. Oh, reminds me of the good old days. Thank you guys for that. I, I threw them a curve when I got here. I just said, hey, is there any way we could do, uh, I'll fly away. And so they did it in, in the midst of victory in Jesus. So I thank you for that on the, on the fly. So speaking of thinking about the good old days, a friend and I were visiting and I am fast approaching 55, the speed limit. <laughs> and we were talking about how we couldn't do things at 25 or at uh, 55 that we did at 25. And he says, you know, anybody who says they can didn't do a whole lot when they were 25. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So 
Anyway, I just want a moment to take a moment and thank the sound team. You know, they're kind of our unsung heroes back there. They're here every week. And uh, the head Fred made it in time. We appreciate uh, seeing you tonight, EJ. How was the game? Never mind. Okay. We're pray- Almost awesome. Th- th- we're, we're, tonight is about miracles, so we just... We're, Oh, oh, oh. oh, but uh, just want to thank you guys for all the effort that you do putting this all together and getting it sent out. How do you define supernatural? You know, I mean, week after week after week, somebody comes up here and tees up the rest of the message. And tonight, Hannah was talking about miracles. So how do you define Supernatural. What is the definition of supernatural? What we can't do. Above natural, right? Supra means above natural. Above natural. Something we can't do on our own. You know, and we as humans are fascinated by the supernatural. In 1938, the first Superman comic book came out. Imagine if you had that original copy. Do you have the original copy? <laughs> uh, maybe? maybe. Maybe. Okay. But think about it. We have always been fascinated by the supernatural. But do you know that we serve a God? Amen. We serve the God of the supernatural. And we're here to share a little story about our face-to-face encounter with the God of the supernatural. Amen. Amen. And I can tell you, and I've stood in this pulpit, and I've shared another story about God's supernatural healing of me from cancer. In fact, it was the first time I ever stepped foot in this church. But this church had faithfully prayed for me for two years. And I came here and I gave my testimony. And we as little human beings who have no understanding of the power of Almighty God, I said, yeah, top that one. (laughs) But he has. And we're going to talk about that tonight. You know, we have our we have our study group on Tuesday night. And I kind of was visiting with them a little bit about, you know, name one of your miracles your, your best miracle from the, book, from, the, from the book of God's word. And one, uh, one of the gentlemen talked about blind Bartimaeus. It's not one we think about a lot, but blind Bartimaeus, Jesus was on, his ro- on the road and he was walking in a crowd of people and the blind beggar Bartimaeus heard him holler, or heard that Jesus was coming and started hollering Jesus' name. And the crowd said, be quiet, you're interrupting the teacher. And that only caused him to holler louder. And Jesus heard him and he said, bring forth the man who's hollering. We talked about the salvation that we get through the resurrection, through the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We talked about Elijah and the fire that he called down from heaven in the midst of the battle with uh, with all the priests from the other side, shall we say. But as we looked through those miracles, I was struck by the detail. It wasn't just Jesus healed a blind man. Ooh, wow, that's that's pretty good stuff, right? But the amount and the depth of the detail that is in God's word about his miracles. The 12 jars of water poured on the altars of stone and 12 more till the water is running out the ditch and over the ground and down the hill. We get that kind of detail in God's word. Well, many of you know that Debbie and I have a little granddaughter named Peyton. And you've heard bits and pieces of her story. Well, tonight, you're going to get the detail. You're going to get some of the ins and outs. And the reason for that is because testimony is so important in God's word. 
Let's turn to Daniel 4, 2 and 3 in the New Living Translation. This is Daniel. I want you all to know about the miraculous signs and wonders the Most High God has performed for me. How great are his signs, how powerful are his wonders. His kingdom will last forever, his rule for all the generations. I want you to know about his miraculous signs and wonders. How else are you going to know unless we tell you? Unless we share our testimony? Unless we give praise to Almighty God for him reaching his down, hand down into our lives and showing us once again that he is still the God of miracles. You know, in our, as part of our introduction, as Case just read, we believe in the marvels, miracles, and the extraordinary manifestations of our God. Those are not just words we say. Those are words we believe. Amen. Let's turn to Jeremiah 29, 11. Why do we believe those words? Because Jesus, or God said, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and to give you a hope. Amen. That's what we're here to talk about, not just for Peyton and not just for us, but for each person sitting in this mm -hmm. room. God is here to give you a future and a hope. Amen. Debbie and I firmly believe that each moment that we breathe is a special gift that we are given by God's grace and that life is not a series of consequences. Coincidences. But, uh, con it is a series of consequences. consequences. Thank you. <laughs> a little Freudian slip there. But life isn't a series of coincidences, but it is a d divine will of God. Let's put up the first picture. So this was the first peak glimpse we got of Peyton. This is October 25th, 2019. Melissa had a planned C-section at, at 39 weeks. She was born, I don't, I don't remember the exact time, around noon on Friday. And this is the little picture we got. And it was just a beautiful moment. I mean, I think many of us who have had children can remember that moment, that first moment that we held that precious baby in our arms. And I remember Jake calling after the C-section was done and everybody was doing fine. And, and he says, she's got a... She's got a hemangioma on her head. I hadn't heard of a hemangioma, but it's a little, little thing in her skin. And, you know, he was, you, could, you could hear in his voice, he was a little, little struck by that. You know, she, didn't, she had 10 fingers and 10 toes, but she wasn't just perfect, you know. Um, she was perfect in God's eyes, though. So this is the, the picture we had until the next morning. Four o'clock the next morning, the nurse comes in to uh, Peyton or to Melissa and Jake's room. Peyton is blue. She has not been breathing well. The nurse pulls her out of Jake's arms, rushes her to the intensive care unit. And this is the next thing we see of Peyton. She's been intubated. Um, she is on morphine at this point. Um, you know, she's, she's having trouble breathing. The initial, the initial diagnosis was she has a collapsed lung. Um, she's, she's got, you know, she's not able to utilize all of her lungs. There's fluid in her lungs. They've got a chest tube in, um, and they're draining off that fluid. So, of course, Grandma and Grandpa, after this phone call, we, we had planned on going a week later to see our brand-new baby girl and, and play with her, and we immediately booked a flight, and we're in in. Columbus by 10 o'clock that evening. You know, the, the first miracle is that God granted her life. Amen. The Amen. next part of the miracle in the story is, is when we got a chance to speak to the nurse, she said, I just was going to poke my head in. Everything was dark. It was 4 o'clock in the morning. I didn't want to disturb them. Something made me walk in that room and turn the light on. I never do that. 
Psalms 119.105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light Amen. unto my path. And that verse has always been very important to me, especially in times of darkness, because sometimes we can only see as far as that light allows us to see. Jake called us the next morning and said, Mom, Dad, she's in the neonatal intensive care unit on a ventilator. But Debbie and I had a peace, and it is not a peace that comes from That's normal right. human thoughts and normal human emotions. So my first thought was, verse, uh, was Psalm 19, 105, and my second one is we know that all, uh, Romans 8, 28, for we know all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. One of the things that we wanted to do during this testimony that we're sharing with you is some of the verses that God brought to our minds or brought to our hearts or people shared with us because God's word is truth, but God's word is peace. And we read these scriptures and, and, and we have the scriptures at the end and, and we read our Bibles and we're loading up our quiver to be able to pull arrows out when we need them. No evil will befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. Amen. We say that every week. Well, I can tell you when they tell you your granddaughter's in the NICU, you start praying it. Amen. And you have a choice to either believe it or not. You know, when you're thirsty, there's nothing better than a full glass of water. Well, when you're spiritually thirsty, there's nothing better than a full glass of spiritual water. You know, it was very interesting because when all this was going on, Monty was just finishing up the gifts of the Holy Spirit and praying in the Spirit and praying in utterances that we can't even understand. You know, Debbie and I were on our way out to the ranch, leaving Raton when we got the call. We were just about to Capulin, and the call came in, and we said, we're on our way. Snowing like a son of a gun. Wind blowing. We got to the house, we packed a bag, and we took off. And Jake says, you've got to promise me one thing. We said, what? And he said, you've got to promise me that you'll stop. We said, okay, son, we stop. We stopped for two hours in a parking lot in Little Rock, Arkansas, <laughs> at a gas station. <clears throat> we stopped. We stopped. We because st truth is important. That's right. We get to the hospital, and Jake's like, you didn't stop. I go, oh, yes, we did. Yes, we did. <laughs> And so, as medical professionals, we are getting the medical side of it, and it doesn't look good. It just doesn't. Your first sight of your granddaughter, you saw what we saw, is her on a ventilator at one day old. And then the news, well, we thought she'd be better by now. She should have been better by now. Everything that we did should have fixed her. We don't know what's going on. Well, I was standing at her bedside in the middle of that night, and I found myself praying in the Spirit. I had done it a few times before, but not very often, but I just found myself praying in the Spirit, and it just seemed to manifest itself more and more and more during our stay there. And we're three or four nights later, we're standing next to the crib, and we are praying and a nurse comes in, and she says, hello, my name is Sarah. And we said, of course it is. <laughs> my name is Sarah, and I couldn't help but see you guys praying over here. Would you mind if I joined you? 
And she began praying with us. And we prayed that night. And we prayed the next night. And you know what she said? She says, thank you guys so much. You can't believe how much you've done for my faith. And we began to understand that through this process, God was going to use ordinary people to touch others, even in the midst of what we were going through. Well, we had a confession book. For those of you who don't know what a confession book is, please grab one in the back as you leave. And we read it over her constantly, hour after hour after hour. And we went in, and the next morning, after one of the nights that we were there, and Sarah, the nurse, was there and said, I hope you don't mind, but I borrowed that book, and I started reading over Peyton. This thing is amazing. I wish I had one. God was already doing above and beyond more than you can expect with little Peyton's life. Mm -hmm. So I hadn't received the gift of the Holy Spirit when Peyton was born. And I remember Sarah t saying when she was, when they were teaching on the gifts of the Holy Spirit that they had gone through a rough time. Sarah was you know, didn't, didn't know where else to turn. And that's, that's what I found, too. I remember distinctly driving through the S-curves. Many of you have driven east of town here, and there's the S-curves. Well, you can't get any radio, and you can't get any cell phone service, so you might as well pray, right? I distinctly remember starting to pray in the Spirit at that point. And praying in the Spirit is so comforting when you don't have the words to pray to God. God knows what, to, what you need, what you want, what your heart feels. But praying in the Spirit, during, particularly during this time, taught me that God hears me all the time. So Peyton was in Columbus, Georgia for nine days. And they said, we don't know what to do with her. We're going to transfer her to Children's Hospital in Atlanta. Well, Debbie and I came home, changed clothes, headed back to Atlanta. When we got to Atlanta, we got the first part of the diagnosis was Peyton had a surfactant insufficiency. That's an awful big word, but it basically means it's the fluid in your, that allows your lungs to expand and contract. So that is why she was able to be born normal, quote unquote normal, and be able to breathe on her own for about 12 hours, but after that surfactant runs out, you need an oil change. She couldn't get the oil change. And then that's why her lungs collapsed. They said they'd only seen it four times in 40 million babies that had been tested. They started calling her the unicorn baby. They had never seen it before in Atlanta. So that was Peyton's first nickname. She's had many. <laughs> but her first nickname was the Unicorn Baby. And they said, the only thing that we can do for her is an infantile lung transplant. And we began the phone calls with Children's Hospital in St. Louis because they don't even do them in Atlanta. And I can tell you those phone calls were unpleasant because they tell you all the things that could go wrong. So let's suffice it to say, oh, and by the way, there has never been a baby with this diagnosis ever made it to lung transplant. Not to scare you or anything, but just to let you know that the chances of her survival to lung transplant are minuscule. The chances of her surviving lung transplant, we have no idea because we've never done it on somebody like her. So that's where you're starting with your odds. You know, one of the things we wanted to bring out tonight is God is working in your life all the time, every moment. If, but sometimes we have to just pause or, or look back, just pause and say, huh, how did that happen but God? 
you know, like he said, we, we kind of gathered up and, and ran out there. Well, I don't know about you ladies, but, you know, we need a thing or two, right? Well, <laughs> I gathered a few things and headed out. Well, I had not gathered all of my skin care and cosmetic needs that I needed. When we were transferred to St. Louis, um, I have a network of friends with cosmetics, and a young woman met me in St. Louis. You know, there are thousands of these consultants across the country. Guess who God brought to my life? This young woman had had a trisomy 18 baby in St. Louis Children's Hospital. Now, I, trisomy 18 is one of those um, chromosomal disorders where the baby's born very deformed, you know, has many, many problems. She'd spent 18 months with her little girl before she passed in St. Louis Children's Hospital. This woman saw a vision of Peyton, and she says, your little girl is going to go out of here. But if we don't take the time to pause and see those miracles that God is, those, those, that's not a little miracle if you stop and think about it. But in comparison to Peyton's lung transplant, that's a, that's a little miracle, but that's still supernatural. One of the, uh, there's, a, there's a couple of visions that happened here at the church. The first one, um, we were having a prayer service, as I remember, and Sarah came up and she said, I saw Jesus breathing into Peyton. I saw Jesus' breath going into Peyton. And I can tell you there were many times that that little girl was struggling to breathe. They, there were many different ways that they helped her breathe, but one of them, one ventilator was an oscillator. And it gives a baby, it exchanges the air in the baby's lungs 600 times a minute, okay? So that little baby just sits there and vibrates. And they have her sedated till she's, she doesn't move other than this vibration. And you'd hear alarms going off and alarms going off and her O2 saturations would go down. Those words, Jesus' breath, were spoken over that little girl many, many, many times. From this sanctuary, from, these, from many of your homes, but in, in her hospital room. Little Miss Anna gave me a word one day. God has not forgotten you. He knows your pain. He loves you and he cares for you. He understands your hurt. This old girl just cried and cried and cried with me. But I can tell you the comfort that that gave me, that she saw God telling me that he knew my pain. Many of you have seen things. Don't be afraid to share those with others, okay? The comfort that comes from that is, is indescribable. If God get, lays something on your heart to share with somebody, share it. If they think you're weird, guess what? They probably thought you were weird anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we had people, literally we've heard of people from all over the world that ended up praying for Peyton. You know, when we first let my mom know, she let her circle of friends know and uh, she had a, has a friend named Nancy Hoffacker, who was in San Diego, who was my mom's neighbor back in Pennsylvania, but was in San Diego at the time. And uh, I, I remember uh, mom telling us about Nancy, that she told Nancy the news, and Nancy just sat down and cried and cried and cried and cried and cried, and then said, that's enough. It's time to pray. Amen. And she went around, and she got the whole family together, and they prayed. And we've heard so many stories like that about people going, oh, that's Peyton? We've been praying for her. We didn't know who she was, but somebody told us about her and that we were supposed to be praying for her. You know, Monty has had a vision that he sees Peyton sitting in a deer stand with her grandpa. That would be me. <laughs> and I can tell you that I am holding Monty to that vision because I know it's going to happen. Can we have the next picture, please? So as you enter Children's Hospital in St. Louis, you have to have a badge. 
and there's a security desk. And we were there at Christmas and we were walking through and we got to know these people and we would always say hi to them and, and, and just visit with them. And of course they see you, you know, multiple times a day. And uh, this security guard, we were walking in and he goes, who are you here to visit? We said, we hadn't seen this guy before. And, he, and we said, we're here to see our granddaughter. And he said, so it's a little girl. He, yes. And he has this huge bag and he, and he just reaches in the top of the bag and he starts to hand us a stuffed bear as a Christmas present for Peyton. And he starts to extend it and he stops. And he pulls it back. And I'll never forget it. He looks at it and he goes, that's not right. And he puts it down and he's got this garbage bag or a 55 gallon drum and it's stuffed full of stuffed animals and he starts digging and he's pulling stuff out and he's pulling stuff out and he's pulling stuff out and he reaches down and he goes this is it this is what I'm supposed to give you and he goes to hand us the unicorn and we can hardly take it Debbie starts crying and I begin to tell him the story of the unicorn baby that's upstairs and he starts praising Jesus in the middle of the lobby, saying, I command this mountain to be picked up and cast into the sea Amen. in the lobby of Children's Hospital in St. Louis. Amen. And he says, she's going to be fine. And I'm like, you have no idea what we're going through right now. She's going to be fine. One day... I was in the Ronald McDonald room. They have, a, they have their, uh, uh, this section of the floor that you can go and you can do your laundry and you can get away and there's little rooms and, and I'm still working this whole time and I'm doing my meetings and I'm doing my phone calls and I was in a corner and I was doing it and I was just finishing up and Peyton, you know, you, you, your Peyton's always on your mind and, and you're trying to go about your normal activities and I'm sitting there and a lady comes in and she sits about four or five chairs over and she's staring out a window and I'm sitting there doing my stuff and I'm finishing up and God says, go talk to her. I said, what? He said, go talk to her. She needs you to talk to her. I'm like, God, I am overwhelmed. My plate is full. And as clear as I'm talking to you, he said, you need to go talk to her. I'm like, what do you say? This lady is staring out the window, tears streaming down her face. She has no idea who I am, and I'm supposed to go and talk to her. And I stood up, and I took about two steps, and I saw, <laughs> you guys, I'm telling you, God's hand is specific. And it's a cloudy, overcast, nasty day outside. And the clouds part and the sun shines in that window and hits that lady when I'm about two steps from her. And I said, ma'am, it's a pretty day. And she turns to me, sobbing, and begins to tell me about her son. Who is not going to make it through the day. But she has nobody else to talk to. She doesn't want to talk to one more doctor. She doesn't want to talk to one more nurse, but she needs to talk. And I spent the next 25 minutes talking to her about her son. Her son named Chevy because her dad, or Chevy's dad, liked the truck. And apparently, so does Chewy. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to mope and feel sorry for myself. And God put me in that woman's path. To this day, I hope that I just did whatever God wanted me to do, that a seed was planted. But for 25 minutes, she didn't have to be alone. And I looked for her after that and never found her. I remember sitting in Peyton's room on Sunday mornings and it's one of the reasons why I th thank the sound team back there is we got to worship with you guys. Mm -hmm. The miracle of technology where we can sit in a hospital room in St. Louis 
and watch the lighthouse in Raton, New Mexico, knowing that you guys were standing in the gap like Nehemiah for us. Well, fast forward a little bit. I know this story is... Um, I think there's... Do you have one video that's Jake? This is Jake's hand, and this is one of the first times that Peyton was able to hold his hand. This is related to this story. So Debbie and I are out there. We stayed several weeks out there, as most of you are aware, and Jake and Melissa went home for Christmas to celebrate Christmas with uh, their other son. And basically they said, we don't know if we're gonna put her on transplant or not, but you guys need to decide because when you come back, we're all gonna have to make a decision. So they went home for a week and they, they were struggling and struggling and struggling with, this is not an easy choice. And even if she makes it through transplant, it's not going to be an easy life and this, and, 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 and. And I was talking to Jake on his way up, and he says, Dad, he said, we're not 100% sure, but we think we're going to go through transplant, but we're still not sure. And he said, all I want is to see my baby girl eat a piece of birthday cake for her first birthday. That's all I want. Anything more than that, but that's all I want. And he's standing over her crib in the hospital and there's a knock at the door and he's praying, God, please give me a sign. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And the knock at the door was a social worker and the social worker called him out in the hall and said, Jake, you ask us if another family with an infantile lung transplant came in for a checkup, if they'd be willing to talk to you you'd want to speak with them. And Jake said, yes. And he walks out in the hall and he meets Abigail's mother. Abigail is one year post-transplant. And Jake said, I just have one question. How did you decide to go forward with the transplant? And the lady said, all I wanted was to see her to live to be one year old and eat a piece of birthday cake. And from that moment on, we knew we were good. So, she gets listed. Not necessarily an easy process to go find four-inch lungs. So she gets listed on January 1st, Debbie and I's anniversary. It was the best anniversary we, gift we've ever had. And Peyton gets listed. But now the wait begins. It could be 18 months. It could be years till they find a set of lungs. But we spoke against that. That's right. We said, it's going to be soon. Well, once again, Debbie and I came home to change clothes. <laughs> Chris Espinoza. I think he's probably watching. <laughs> he's mad that we haven't talked about him yet. Sorry about that, folks. I've always wondered when that was going to happen. But anyway. So I actually had a business trip up to Michigan. Debbie says, look, I got to get out of the house. I'm going to go with you. Well, we tried to schedule her on the same flight. She couldn't be on the same flight. My flight was booked. So we drive to Denver. I get on a plane, fly. We felt like corporate executives. You know how corporate executives can't fly on the same plane together? It was really weird. So anyway, I fly up to Michigan. She flies up on a different plane. We meet at the airport. We go to the hotel. We have our business meetings. I get back to the airport. I fly back. She's two hours behind me. And so I fly I, through St. Louis. She has a connection through St. Louis. Lands on the tarmac. She goes, boy, it'd be really nice if we got the transplant today because I'm sitting right here in St. Louis. I get back to Denver. I'm waiting on her. I call Jake. I leave him a message. Hey, Jake, it'd be a great day. This is February 20th, a year ago. Jake, it'd be just really great. 
If you got lungs today, because I'm at the airport, all I got to do is jump on a plane. Ten minutes later, my phone rings. Hey, Jake, what's up? Dad, we got lungs. I go, yeah, right, whatever. He goes, no, Dad, I'm serious. I couldn't answer your call because I was in the meeting. They're going to get Peyton's lungs. She has surgery at 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. While I am talking to him on the phone, Debbie's plane lands. She texts me. I'm on the ground. I try to call her. She ignores me. <laughs> Only the biggest thing happened in her life since she found me, and she's ignoring it. <laughs> Speaking of miracles, she said yes. <laughs> I say, answer your phone. I call her. Hey, your son's on the other line. He has news for you. We're sitting at the Denver airport. Do you think there is a flight out of Denver airport to St. Louis in a timely fashion? No. Do you know it's only 11 and a half hour drive from Denver, Colorado to St. Louis, Missouri? We drove all night. And walked in the door three hours before Peyton's surgery. The miracles just continued. Not just one surgeon. You know how many surgeons in the world do infantile lung transplants? Neither do I. But there's not very many. <laughs> but there happens to be two of them at St. Saint, at Saint Louis. And they take opposite shifts. So there's somebody on at all times. February 21st, 2000, they both happened to be in the hospital. And they said, gosh, wouldn't it be great if we just did this together? Both of them were there. They did the surgery. Fast forward. Her surgery went amazing. So I think we've got the next picture. This is a drawing that Miss Kitty did for me. And this was a vision she had of Peyton lying on a bed, glowing, and she has a halo. She said there are two fierce beings, angels, fighting off incredible darkness. She said the evil and the ugliness that they were fighting off was so powerful and I've treasured this picture that she did for me but let's go to the next one so Peyton has her transplant on the 24th and Eric and I have walked all over the skywalk system in St. Louis we put on hundreds of miles there's 15 miles of skywalk that connects the buildings there and we thought we'd walk them all thought we'd walk them all for some reason, you know, on the video games, you've got to get to the new levels, right? Well, every now and then we'd challenge ourselves to find a new level in the hospital, right? We decided to go to a new level and found this drawing the, the day after Peyton's transplant. This is a picture done by a transplant, a patient who'd had a lung transplant. And, and it's hard to see from back there, but the surgeon's hands are golden, okay? What, what, was, what did they bring to Christ? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The surgeons are wearing halos. Isn't that, isn't that fascinating? That I'm, I'm going to call this man a secular man. I don't know. Based on the description that was beside the picture, I'm, I'm assuming that. The circles are healthy cells flowing into this man's body. All I could think about when I saw this picture is Jesus', Jesus breath. breath. And I've, I've treasured these two pictures. And, and interestingly enough, I didn't make the connection until a few days ago how similar those two pictures were. That Kitty saw this vision long before Peyton ever had a transplant. And the day after she has her transplant, God shows us this picture. Mm -hmm. 
So Peyton is doing great post-transplant, gets transferred to the apartment, COVID. Yeah. Like there wasn't enough going on in our lives. <laughs> so we have to step out of the picture. Can't go back and see her. First time we get to see her, she's transferred to an apartment there in St. Louis, and we get to see her in that apartment in June. So we haven't seen her for three months, almost four. And we get there, and there's this beautiful pink baby, not in a coma, not on a ventilator, and we get to hold her. You understand, we didn't get to hold her. So I am holding her, and she, well, she was crying and crying and crying. She was really upset. She's on a, still at that point, she was still on a tremendous amount of drugs, morphine, all these things in her system. They're trying to wean them off. She's going through withdrawals. She's not a very happy baby. So they're like, here, you take her for a while. So I'm walking her, and she is crying and crying and crying. And there's this hallway, and I'm just walking up and down this hallway, and she's crying and crying and crying and crying and crying. And crying. And I start praying to her in the spirit. And I don't take five steps. And she quits crying. And she opens her eyes. And she's just looking at me. And I continue to walk her. And it was my first unbelievable moment with my granddaughter. And there's been several more since. But we want to fast forward to a year. We have the Do we have the picture? The video? Shake, 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 So I'd like to finish up with a, just a couple of verses in 2 Timothy chapter 1. Oh, <laughs> but we wanted to share all this with you tonight. Number one, because you guys have been with us every mm -hmm. step of this journey. Amen. Number two, because we wanted to share with you the specifics. A lot of you have heard parts of this, but we wanted to share the whole thing. But really, we wanted to share it because of what it tells us in God's word. Let's look at 2 Timothy 1, 8 and 9. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his purpose and grace, to his, uh, which, was, which was given to us in Jesus Christ before time began. We wanted to give you a glimpse of what the glory of God's work has done in our lives and what he's doing in each and every one of yours. The takeaway for us is simple. Peyton may be a unicorn baby, but in God's eyes, each of you is a unicorn. That's right. Each of you is unique, and each of you is a miracle of God. Amen. We just want to thank you tonight for your being with us and your patience and allowing us to walk through this and share this with you. But again, we wanted to thank the Lighthouse Church. Like it says in Luke in the story of the paralytic, where Jesus heals the paralytic, but he heals the paralytic because of the faith of the friends who carried him there. You guys helped carry us. Mm -hmm. You helped carry us Amen. to this miracle. I'd like to go ahead and read our scriptures and our blessing. 
Remember, tomorrow is a time change. <laughs> so if you want to come back and hear that again, you need to set your clocks accordingly. <laughs> but then after we finish, if anybody wants to come up here and pray, we'd be glad to pray whatever you need us to pray with you for, or just come up and pray with us and allow us to thank you personally <laughs> for being with us when we needed prayer. All right. Blessed art thou, thou O Lord, Lord our God, God King, King of, of the, the universe, universe, who has supplied all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. No, no weapon formed against me shall prosper, for my righteousness is of the Lord. But whatever I do will prosper, for I am like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. With, With what measure I meet, it is measured unto me. I sow bountifully, therefore I reap bountifully. I give cheerfully, and my God has made all grace abound toward me. And I, having all sufficiency of all things, do abound to all good works. No evil will befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. For you have given your angels charge over me, to keep me in all my ways, and in my pathway there is life, and there is no death. I am a doer of the word of God, and I am blessed in my deeds. I am happy in those things which I do, because I am a doer of the word of God. The word of God is forever settled in heaven, therefore I establish his word upon this earth. So I'm going to read the blessings tonight, and I'm going to make a confession. There are nights that I sit back there when, when Sarah's reading blessings, and my mind just goes wandering off about all the little things that I need to get done or the struggles and trials that I've had during the day. But even if you can grasp hold of one blessing, just soak that one in and take it home with you. So, Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone works wonders, and blessed be his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. May you be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. May you put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. May you take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil, the evil day, and having done all, you will be able to stand. May you be strengthened with all power according to God's glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience. May you be blessed with the love and kindness of the Lord. May you have abundant happiness because your strength is in the Lord and in your heart are pilgrim highways to his holy mountain. May you go from strength to strength and appear before God in Zion. Behold, God is your salvation. May you trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord God is your strength and song, and he has become your salvation. Therefore, may you joyously draw water from the springs of salvation. May calmness and confidence in the Lord make you strong. May you prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. May the Lord yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. May you set the Lord continually before you, because he is at your right hand, and you will not be shaken. Therefore, may your heart be glad and may your glory rejoice and your flesh also will dwell securely. May the Lord show you the path of life. In his presence is fullness of joy and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. May grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you. We just thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to gather in your house of worship mm, you, with our brothers and sisters. Lord, but we thank you most of all that you are the God of miracles. Mm -hmm. We thank you that you care enough about us to bestow those miracles upon us. Lord, we are humbled to be your servants. We thank you for your our Lord and Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen.